Crowder. Aiden Malosso. Hunter Crowder. Josh Montgomery. Jason McMillan. Mike Cotton. Ben Fiver. Caleb West. Ron Bethalamy. Justin Yusei. Darnell Williams. Kane Reeves. Jamel Dumas. Taylor Catano. And you're watching Wildcat Weekly on WildcatMedia.com. Yeah. That's what we do, man. We do this, you heard? That's what we do. Hello once again and welcome to this week's edition of Wildcat Weekly. I'm Jordan Meisner. We'll take a look back this week at LC's 49-28 loss to McMurray. It was a game that pitted the top two offenses of the ASC, but in the end it was special teams that came away as a deciding factor in that game. So we'll take a look at the highlights of that first. We'll also have interviews this week with LC senior wide receiver Dane Reeves, as well as sophomore defensive end Terrence Bratton as always. And then we'll finally get a look at senior day here at LC as the seniors had their last moment as LC Wildcats. <laughs> Elsie taking on the McMurray Warhawks, looking for their school record eighth win and sole possession of second place in the American Southwest Conference. First drive for the Wildcats, Jamie Bunning looking to pass, and he finds Darnell Williams streaking over the middle for a 25-yard pickup. Two plays later, just let your playmaker make plays. Bunning throws it up to Williams, who makes a great grab for the 18-yard touchdown. Four straight game that the Wildcats score on their first possession, and that's the start of a record-setting game for Darnell Williams. Later in the first, we Murray with the ball deep in LC territory, and the Warhawks standout quarterback Jake Mullen avoids the pressure, and it's RJ Long for a 16-yard touchdown, 7-6 ball game. Moving to the second quarter, and that's where McMurray's special teams will begin to take over. The Warhawks on fourth and 20 from their own 15 and trailing. Go with the fake punt, and Stephen Warren hits Jarrett Smith down the sideline for an 85-yard touchdown. Ensuing extra point attempts, Warren again on the fake hits Jarrett Smith for the two-point conversion. McMurray now leads 14-7. Turning point in the game on the Warhawks' next drive. Mullen looks like he's going to be sacked for a safety, but he somehow gets the ball to Justin Johnson, who picks up eight yards to spoil a Wildcat scoring opportunity. Same drive on third and 14. Mullen scrambles and picks up eight yards before he's taken down by Phil Ford to bring up fourth and six, and McMurray is forced to punt once again. However, on the punt, Hal Mummy calls for another fake punt, and Stephen Warren carries it himself, picks up 10 yards, and a back-breaking first down. McMurray looking to capitalize on the successful fake punt, and they do just that. Mullen looking downfield and throws a bullet to Delfonte Diamond, who takes it 66 yards for a touchdown. Extra point was no good, 20 to seven McMurray. Wildcats look to answer back on their next drive, but Jamie Bunning's pass is picked off by DJ Biza, who returns it 48 yards all the way down to the LC seven yard line. Very next play for McMurray, and they waste no time taking advantage of the turnover as Chris Simpson goes right untouched into the end zone for a seven-yard touchdown. 27 straight unanswered points for the Warhawks, and they lead 27-7. Jake Mullen would make a mistake on McMurray's next possession. He drops back, looks for Delfonte Diamond, but the errant pass is picked off by Reggie Calhoun, and the playmaking junior defensive back gives the Wildcats a sign of life late in the first half. Later in the drive, Bunning looks in the end zone for Justin Usay, and a beautiful throw and catch results in seven points to the Wildcats, who trail 27 to 14 at halftime. Second half action now, Jake Mullen looking over the middle. Vinay Janza comes up with a huge interception at the 30 yard line, and perhaps a little momentum has begun to shift LC's way. Ensuing Wildcat drive, Bunning figures why not go back to Williams, who goes up and over McMurray's defense for a 49-yard gain. Goal to go for LC. After the next three plays yielded negative yardage, Adon Olivares comes out for a 28-yard field goal, but a rare miss from the freshman kicker leaves the Wildcats down 27-14. ASC's leader in sacks will make a play on the Warhawks' next possession. Watch as Phil Ford comes off the edge and demolishes Jake Mullen for the sack. Mullen will get his revenge later in the third quarter, however, as he throws a beautiful pass to R.J. Long in the corner for a 38-yard score. 33-14, to McMurray. Elsie's offense must get back on track on the next drive, and Bunning does it by throwing it up again to Darnell Williams, who snags it at the two-yard line of McMurray for a 42-yard pickup. 
Next play, Bunning hands off to senior Deron Bartholomew, and he scores from two yards out to get LC within two scores, 33 to 21. Final Warhawk drive of the third quarter. On fourth and 10, Mullen rolls out, but Josh Montgomery is there waiting for him, and the big defensive tackle from Texarkana, Texas, shuts down the drive with a sack. Fourth quarter, McMurray ball, and Jake Mullen gets everyone to bite on the pump and go, then throws a nice pass to Simeon Neal, who takes it to the end zone for a 67-yard touchdown. 41-21, McMurray. Ensuing Wildcat drive, Bunning finds Dane Reeves down the field for a big 28-yard gain and a first down. Two plays later, Bunning throws it up to Darnell Williams, who makes yet another highlight reel grab at the one-yard line for a 32-yard pitch and catch to give the Cats a tremendous scoring opportunity. However, another missed opportunity at the goal line as Sir Derek Tyson fumbles at the goal line, McMurray recovers and another chance is squandered for LC. After the turnover, McMurray deep in LC territory and Mullen hands off to Justin Johnson as the transfer from Oklahoma University scores a four yard touchdown to make it 49 to 21. Final LC possession of the game, Bunning would continue to look for Darnell Williams. On second and 10, he hits number 88 for 21 yards and a first down. Two plays later on another second and 10 play, Bunning looks Darnell's way again and that wraps up a nine catch, 244 yard day for Williams as he sets the LC single game record for receiving yards. On third and goal, LC finishes this drive with a one yard touchdown run from Deron Bartholomew as the senior scores his final touchdown at Wildcat Field but McMurray walks away with a 49 to 28 victory. And I'm here with LC senior wide receiver Dane Rees. Now, Dane, we look back at this past Saturday against McMurray. Uh, a lot of opportunities left on the table, particularly uh, special teams. Uh, definitely, I don't think uh, the guys and the coaching staff was really ready for what they had in store. And honestly, you don't see stuff like what how Mummy had to uh, bring to the table last Saturday. Like going forward on fourth and 20 on your own 15, you don't. You don't see stuff like that, I mean, so you really don't prepare for it, I guess. So we was kind of a shock, and you know, but you still, we still had opportunities after that to to put the game uh, into, into reach and uh, make plays, and you know, we still we kind of didn't. So but. that that pump formation that McMurray had is that something that you saw on tape during the week, or is that something that kind of caught y'all off guard? I honestly can't really answer that question because I don't I don't play special teams, so I don't really I don't watch any film on them, so I just concentrate on the defense, but. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if they've done that during the year or not, so I honestly don't know. Now we look ahead going to Harden-Simmons game. This is a team that y'all beat in the last two years. Now two years ago y'all beat them at their place and they jumped in their swimming pool, so yes. uh, I'm sure it's something that they, uh, they don't want to let y'all come into their house and beat them again. So y'all have a tough test this week. Yeah, um, they have nothing to lose this week. We, uh, obviously we have a chance to make history this week and go 8-2, and two, and that's our focus. We want to we want to send the senior class out with a with the winningest record in LC history. So that's our focus this week, and we know that Harden Simmons is giving us their best shot because obviously two years ago we bet we beat them and jumped in their pool, and last year they came over here and they missed a field goal to win the game. So they're gonna they're gonna give us their best shot, and we're gonna we're gonna fire back at them. Now you talk about the senior class, and you know those guys are gonna be playing most likely the last game. You know, we'll, best you could almost finish right now is third place in the ASC. So they'll be playing the last game. You'll be playing your last game. Uh, what are some of those feelings and some of those emotions that are running through your head? Um, <laughs> I just I just like to think you know about the past four years and everything we've been through together, and it's it's been it's truly been a blessing to uh, just to been a be a part of this environment and what you know what is what God has done to, for each of us. And uh, I mean, I just I can't wait to. Uh, to make history this week with the guys, it's going to be something special. Now, you talk about your story since you've been here. You came here uh, not even as a wide receiver. You came here as a, as a quarterback, and you've had qu quite a road since then, coming from your first game and your first completion, uh, your first catch as a Wildcat. Uh, right. Maybe that didn't go quite as planned. No, it didn't. Uh, coming here, I played quarterback in high school, and getting switched to receiver, it, you know, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't, uh, wasn't ready for that. And my freshman year, I honestly questioned myself whether I should be here or not. And uh, but with the Lord, you know, Lord gave me strength and uh, helped me stay here with Coach Dunn's help and Coach Matchett, and uh, it's, just, it's it's been a blessing, man. I just I never thought I would be where I'm at. I never thought this team would be where we're at, and we got you know I just want to you know finish on a good note. Now you earned that nickname your freshman year, the one hit wonder. What's the uh, what's the story behind that? <laughs> well, uh, my first play on a on a varsity on a, in a varsity game, I uh, it was an option play to where the quarterback faked the ball to the running back. And he ran the uh, ran uh, ran the option with the slot receiver, 
And so I never ran in practice. So I really wasn't ready for the ball, but uh, the, the quarterback kind of pitched it behind me. And when I reached back to, to grab it, dude hit me right with his face mask right in my ribs. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was a shocker. It, that's the most pain I felt in my whole life, actually. So it was, <laughs> just wasn't expecting that. Now we look at the, the receiving core for LC. Under Coach Dunn, the receivers, mm -hmm. they get a lot of attention. They get a lot of numbers. And, uh, you know, you look at it, you have Darnell Williams, a, a, a D1 transfer, a, a big-time player. Uh, Demario Parker, another D1 transfer. And then you got you sitting right there. You're second on the team in reception, second on the team in yards. And uh, you really put up some big numbers. Uh, it's got to be kind of hard to stay humble sometimes, though, whenever you, you look at those numbers and see yourself right up there with those type of guys. I guess. I, you know, I, before the season, I never thought I'd, you know, I never really thought about stats. I was just, I just wanted to be in the playoffs. I wanted to win a conference championship. But obviously, we didn't, you know, accomplish some the goals uh, that I had that we had for, as a team. But uh, you know, the numbers. It's it's exciting to see me up there. But I I traded anything for a, for a conference uh, championship ring or uh, just a chance of a shot at the playoffs. So, but you know, it's it's been a, you know God's blessed me with so much, and I just, I just I'm humbled about it. So. Now you look back uh, on your career here. What's one thing that you could say? Uh, really, two things. One thing that you could say that you that you'll miss most of all, and then uh, the other thing that, that that you could say your, your best memory as a Wildcat so far in four years. Uh, the thing I miss most is just the uh, the relationships you, you have with your brothers here. You uh, during four years, man. Me and the seniors, we've been through so much together, and just the relationships we formed. It's a uh, this could definitely gonna be missed when I when we move on and we get our own jobs and our own careers and. That's that's definitely the thing I'm going to miss most. And what was the second part of your uh, question? Uh, I was going to say, if there's one thing that you uh, that, that your best memory is a Wildcat. Best memory is a Wildcat. Uh, probably, honestly, right now, just hopefully, it's going to be going eight and two. It's going to be my, you know, that's that's our focus. So I hope that's going to be my best memory. But right now, that win against Hart Simmons last year and just the emotions that was all tied up in the game and how we won, that was probably the best memory. Just seeing. Seeing Ben McLaughlin's face and him keeping his helmet on, that's just, it's always stuck in my mind. So that, that's just a gr great memory. All right, Dan, we appreciate you being on the show this week and taking a time out. And uh, we'll be right back with Terrence Bratton, and he'll give us analysis of the McMurray loss as well as the upcoming game against Harden Simmons. And I'm joined here as always this week by LC sophomore defensive end Terrence Bratton. Uh, Terrence, we'll look back at this McMurray game and certainly a lot of regret coming from this game, I think you could say. Yes, and we definitely had a lot of confidence coming into this game, but I think we got caught off guard with some of the formations, some of the stuff that we didn't prepare for at our best ability. So it really cost us Saturday. Now, I've always said all year that nobody wild athlete LC, athlete for athlete. But I tell you what, I think McMurray, uh, maybe we don't give them enough credit. They had some monsters in the front seven, some really some that could really move and, and really hit. Whenever you play an opponent that matches up with you, like far as your abilities, it's very important that you don't make many mistakes because they'll capitalize off of those. And McMurray didn't make many mistakes Saturday. And they every opportunity they were given, they took full advantage of. They didn't drop many balls, even though their offensive line did a lot of holding and stuff like that. Sometimes you just have to play through it. And, and of course, you know, the, the spotlight for McMurray is always going to be their quarterback, Jake Mullen. Uh, that guy, I, did it catch you off guard a little bit by how athletic he was and kind of strong he was? I know you had him in the back of the end zone for a, a potential safety, and he just, uh, just out-muscled some guys. Out of all the quarterbacks I've hit all year, he was definitely the toughest. I mean, most quarterbacks go down once I hit them like that, but... I mean, he just held his ground, completed a pass, and the receiver advanced up the field. And it's pretty disappointing. I think about it each and every day. Now, of course, you know the regret that comes from that game. You guys probably uh, the outside looking in on the playoffs, most likely. But you still have a chance to go eight and two and set the school record for wins. And it's going to come against a, a really formidable opponent in, in Harden Simmons this week. We have the opportunity to do something that Louisiana College football has never done, and that is come out with eight wins. But Harden Simmons isn't going to just lay down for us. They also have a lot of seniors over there that are going to fight for their last final game. So it's important that we go over there with the focus to beat Harden Simmons. And that's another team we're going to get a lot of holding and stuff like that from. But it's going to be important that we go over there with the right mindset. Now, you guys have had the formula to beat them the last couple of years. You beat them the last two years. Uh, two years ago, you go to their place and beat them uh, last year in the, really one of the bigger games in LC history. It, uh, it turned out to be, and you, you beat them here in, a, in, a, in really a, just a, a marathon of a game. Uh, you've had the formula to beat them the last couple of years. What do you have to do this year to beat them? We just have to – I know defensively their offense is going to run power and counter, so it's going to be important that we stuff the running game. They have some solid running backs. I think they have like three seniors on the offensive line, so they're going to play very hard. So mainly on defense is just to stop the run and force them to pass. 
Now, of course, uh, Coach Matchett has been preaching all week, win this one for the seniors and, and go hard the last week for the seniors. And, of course, it's kind of hard to, to, to keep focus sometimes whenever you really don't have a lot to play for anymore. But uh, how important is it for you guys to go out there and just keep fighting hard and win this one for the seniors and let them leave their legacy as the best team really in school history? It's very important to go out there and give it our all because the seniors want to have something to remember. And they have the opportunity to go out there and produce eight wins, something that Louisiana College has never done before. And that's enough to fight for right there. So everyone's going to definitely be amped up for the game. All right, Terrence, we appreciate it. And, of course, for Briar Barton, Al Quartermont, Spencer Christman, Tyler Ray, Terrence Bratton, and the rest of the Wildcat Weekly staff, I'm Jordan Meisner for Wildcat Weekly.
Next up for the Wildcats, number 42, Austin Proctor. Tied in from Grove Ridge, Louisiana. Oh. He attended Torrance Catholic High School. And he is accompanied today by his parents, Mark and Anna, as well as his fiance, Paul Woodard, Louisiana College graduate, and his brother, Jesse Proctor. Austin Proctor. Number 21 for Wildcats, Jane Reeves, senior wide receiver out of Longville. And he attended South Florida High School, being accompanied today by his friends Dwayne and Kelly Reeves, along with his brother Trey. Jane Reeves. Number 11, Justin Yusei for the Wildcats, wide receiver out of Bell Chase, Louisiana. Bell Chase High School, Justin, accompanied by his parents, Kevin and Wanda Yusei. Justin Yusei. Number 49, Caleb West. Linebacker from Bayou Chico, Pine Prairie High School. Caleb is accompanied today by his parents, Kevin and Anita West as well as his girlfriend, Kelly DeVille. <laughs> Caleb West. And finally, our last senior, number 88, Darnell Williams. Bobby <laughs> Seaton out of Bigfoot, Mississippi, going from Florida High School. Darnell is accompanied by his mother, Richard Stivey, as well as his girlfriend, Jennifer Shaw.